Okay, today we're going to look at a situation that shows up when our load is acting in a direction which is not supported by the roller. And you'll see in this case, this roller is free to move up and down. The roller can only support the truss left and right. But here we have a vertical load. So this simple cantilevered truss is one of the easiest places to see this issue. Uh, and so we're going to take a look at this issue today and look at exactly what's going on with this and how to make sure we account for all the forces that are acting externally on the truss. And then since we're at it, we're going to solve for all the forces in the members of this truss because that's what we do. All right, so we're going to start this problem just like we would any other problem. We're going to look at the sum of all torques around the pin and then the sum of all torques around the roller. We know the sum of all torques around each support needs to be zero. Um, so let's just start this out the way we always would, the sum of all torques around the pin. That's this hinge right here. We know that has to equal zero. If it doesn't equal zero, that means this truss is going to rotate. And well, that would mean it's a failing truss. And you are now an unemployed engineer, so we don't want that. Or you're building drawbridges, but I doubt that's the case. Uh, so we're gonna go through, do all our math here. Uh, so looking at torque, let's start with the load. We've got 60 pounds acting at a radius of seven feet. So seven times 60 times the sine of the angle between the 60 pounds and the seven feet. Realize these are at a right angle to each other. So it's 90 degrees. Now, this force or this load is producing a torque which is counterclockwise around the pin. That means the roller needs to be producing a torque which is clockwise around the pin. So there's gonna be some force by the roller here. We're gonna go through and do the math to find that. So in the opposite direction, rather than counterclockwise, the force by the roller is gonna be producing a clockwise torque. So here we'll have, if we said counterclockwise was positive, clockwise torque is negative. So we're gonna have our force by the roller multiplied by the radius, that's three. And realize the roller is free to move up and down. So the force by the roller must be in the horizontal plane. That means whether it's to the right or the left, it's gonna be 90 degrees. Now we can make a very educated guess in knowing that this roller is gonna be pushing to the left here because it has to produce torque that's clockwise relative to this pin. So if we go through and we solve for the force by the roller here, we find the force by the roller is 140 pounds. Okay, and being good little boys and girls, we're gonna go through and we're gonna solve for the sum of all torques around this roller now. So the sum of all torques around the roller has to add up to zero. Well, if we look at this 60 pound load, it's acting on the end of this radius or this beam right here. Now we don't know the actual length of this beam and we don't know the actual angle between this force and this beam. However, we're going to use what's called the effective moment arm to find the torque by this load around this point. If you haven't watched the video on effective moment arm, there's a link up here. So what this reduces down to is on the end of a seven foot effective moment arm is a 60 pound load. Okay, there is no angle involved. Uh, 60 pounds is at a right angle to the effective moment arm that has a length of seven feet. Again, go back and watch that effective moment arm video if, if you're, you're lost in that logic here. In the opposite direction, we're gonna have some force by this pin here. This force by the pin has to keep the truss from rotating counterclockwise around the roller now. So that means the force by the pin is going to probably be acting to the right. Uh, and I'm going to hold off on drawing this just for a moment because I want to look at the math first and do what most people would do when, when looking at this problem. Most people look at this radius and they'll say, okay, we've got a radius of three. There's a force by the pin. Now the angle, that one's a little bit tricky. People want to say it's to the right. And it's not. I'm going to hold off on that. 
I'm just going to leave this as theta. We actually don't know which way the pin is acting. And I'll explain why in just a minute here. So what happens? We start doing math. We find that 7 times 60, that's 420, uh, is equal to 3fp sine theta. And we do a little math. We find 140 is equal to fp sine theta. And what happens is typically people run through this so fast, they go, ah, sine theta, we'll just squint and pretend it's not there. So often we've got forces acting at right angles to beams. Let's just call that 90, and we'll say the force by the pin is 140. And they're kind of right. Okay? We'll end up with 140 pounds to the right by this pin, but I want you to realize that's not the total force by the pin. That's only a component of the force by the pin. The total force by the pin is still at some unknown angle. And if you just crash right through this sine theta and ignore it, you think the force by the pin is 140 pounds to the right. And in the next step, you'll notice there's a big problem. So what we're going to do is something that most people don't do when they, when they solve for the reaction forces in a truss, and that is we're not just going to look at torque here. We're going to look at the sum of all forces in each axis. So the sum of all forces in the x-axis has to add up to zero, otherwise this truss is moving side to side. So we know there's 140 pounds to the left. We're sure of that. So we'll say we've got negative 140. Plus we have this 140 pounds to the right. So it seems as though things check out there. The math checks out. But here's the dangerous one. Let's look at the sum of all forces in the y-axis. We know it has to add up to zero. Otherwise, we have a crashing truss, and we are now unemployed engineers. So there's 60 pounds downward. And there appears to be nothing else vertical. What we have is an unbalanced force, and we can't have an unbalanced force and remain employed. So there's got to be more going on here. I want you to realize, backing up to the math here, this Fp sine theta is the force by the pin at some unknown angle. These are both unknowns. And when we look at the sum of all forces in the y-axis, we see that the load is acting downward, the roller can do nothing vertically, that means the pin has to be acting upward. So if there's 60 pounds downward, we'll say that's negative, that means we're going to have to have some force by the pin in the y-axis. And in order for all this to add up to zero, the force by the pin in the y-axis has to equal 60 pounds upward. So this pin is actually acting upward with a force of 60 pounds. That means the total force by the pin is this way. If you combine these two with the Pythagorean theorem, you'll find that they are going to produce a total resultant force of 152 pounds. So the pin's actually acting with a force of 152 pounds. Now it's perfectly acceptable to say that the pin is acting with 60 pounds in the y-axis and 140 pounds in the x. Uh, that actually is going to be very useful in a minute here when we go through start to solve for the forces in the beams. But the whole point of this problem is to show you this issue that shows up sometimes. Anytime we have a situation where this load is acting in a direction where the roller can't support the load, we'll, we'll almost always, I don't want to say always because there's one situation where we won't, we'll almost always find that there are forces by the pin in two axes. Okay? So, since we're at it, we've come this far, let's just go through for funsies and let's solve for the forces in each of these trusses. And to do that, we're gonna set up our handy dandy table. Okay, in writing out this table, I've become fully aware of the fact that the last words that came out of my mouth were handy dandy. And, and for that, I apologize. I promise never to say that ever again. It was embarrassing. All right, 
moving on, uh, let's look at our different members here. Uh, as always, we can start either with the load or with either of the supports. And in this case, because we've actually already worked out the forces at the pin here, so much of our work is already done. We know AB is a horizontal member. That means it can carry no load in the y-axis. And we know BC is a vertical member. That means it can carry no load in the horizontal axis. And that makes our life nice and easy for this truss right here. Because we know the pin is pulling with 140 pounds to the right. AB has to be carrying all of that load. And so that means AB in the x direction is 140. If AB is pulling with a force of 140 to the left, that'll keep this joint B from moving. Now at the other end, AB is pulling with a force of 140. AB is under tension because it's pulling. We could, in fact, replace this with a cable. Oftentimes you'd see a situation like this, a beam connected by a cable to a wall, and maybe we're hanging a 60 pound sign out here, or something like that. So the force in AB is 140 pounds. BC is a similar story, except it's vertical, because AB cannot affect what's going on here in BC. BC has to be pulling downward on this point. You'll notice the pin is acting upward, BC is pulling downward, and it's going to have to be pulling downward with a force of 60 pounds. So BC in the y-axis is 60, which means the total force in BC is 60 pounds. You'll notice both of these members are under tension. They're, they're pulling. So we'll mark this as tension, and that is tension. Lastly, we've got AC. Well, we can look at either end of, of AC to determine the force in it. I think this end is, well, just a little bit more convenient. Uh, you'll see there's 140 pounds to the right. There's 60 pounds downward. If I had done this really carefully, this arrow would be about half as long as that arrow. But I didn't. Here, we'll fudge it for those of you who are upset at me. There we go. We fudged it with a really long arrow there. Okay, we're happy now, right? My in-laws are happy. We're happy. Okay, so with this, we know A in the Y, or sorry, AC in the Y has to be 60 pounds because AB cannot carry any of this load vertically. So AC has to be 60 vertically. And if you look at this point right here, AC has to be acting horizontally with 140 pounds to counteract this 140 to the right. Do the math on it again, and you'll find that this is carrying a force of 152 pounds. Now, this beam is not in tension. It's in compression because it's pushing. At this end, it's pushing 152 pounds. That's up and to the left. At this end, down by the roller, it's pushing down and to the right with a force of 152 pounds. It's under compression. And that, boys and girls, is how we go through and we solve a cantilevered truss in a situation where the load is parallel to the direction of freedom or the direction that our roller is free to move. And that's all for now.